The Division 2 promotion chasers crew went in front with their first meaningful attack at the Dell. Gareth Wally's cross looking routine, but under pressure from Rob Edwards and Deli Adebola, Dave Besant failed to cut it out, and Southampton were in trouble. They were behind for almost exactly an hour and needed something magical to level it. Matt Letissier, a long overdue seventh of the season. Southampton earn a replay, but a forbidding looking trip to Gresty Road follows. Oxford, also of the second division, set out to smother Nottingham Forest at the city ground, and for a half they succeeded. On 53 minutes, though, Kevin Campbell used his power to shrug off Steve Wood, and then he slid the ball under Phil Whitehead in Oxford's goal. Forest couldn't get the second they were looking for, though, and Oxford dominated the final half hour. Joey Beecham's corner flicked on by Paul Moody, and Stuart Massey earned Oxford a deserved replay in the final minute. West Ham are facing a fixture pileup in February and Grimsby's stout resistance complicates things further. 24 minutes in and Brian Laws held off the challenge of Robbie Slater to put Grimsby on course for only their second win in 11 starts. Hammers missed several good chances to equalise before they drew level. Danny Williamson's control and instant cross giving Ian Dowie the chance to head his sixth of the season. But West Ham couldn't finish the job and now face four big games in nine days. There's been little between these Premier League strugglers in recent meetings, and it was the same story here. Coventry went in front inside two minutes. Richard Shaw's deflected shot, Noel Whelan scoring his sixth goal in ten starts. But the visitors were level on 33 minutes. Uwe Rossler free down the right, his cross looking destined for Steve Lomas, but David Boost finished off the job for him, his third own goal of the season. No further breakthroughs for over an hour, then two late goals. Manchester City in front for the first time on 83 minutes. Low mass persistence down the right, setting up Gary Flitcroft to volley home his first of the season. It looked all over for Coventry, but in injury time, Gordon Strachan's run and cross, Dion Dublin's 14th goal of the season, and that kept plans for a Manchester derby in round five on ice. Charlton stumbled past the challenge of the lowest placed team left in the competition, but it was Brentford who scored first on 17 minutes. Martin Granger's corner headed into the air by Steve Brown, and Barry Ashby poked it over the embarrassed Mike Salmon. The lead lasted just three minutes. Lee Bowyer found John Robertson, and he changed feet brilliantly to shoot high into the net from 20 yards past Kevin Dearden. And two minutes before half-time, Charlton were in front for the first time. Bowyer starting and finishing the move. Robinson's cross, Bowyer's 11th of the season. 11 minutes into the second half, and Brentford were level again. Paul Smith's gentle lob dropped by Mike Salmon. Four minutes from time, Charlton's David White spared Salmon's blushes. The substitute's free kick, smashing against Dearden's right-hand post before going in. Charlton admitted they were lucky, but they now play Liverpool or Shrewsbury in round five. Huddersfield Town are making good progress in Division 1 and also in the FA Cup, but Peterborough frustrated them until after half-time at the McAlpine Stadium. Huddersfield raised the tempo then, and on 52 minutes, Darren Bullock fired them in front. And on 74 minutes, Andy Booth, the England under-21 striker, got the second to ensure that Huddersfield would earn a big money tie in the next round. Sinclair, who is such an important player for Queen's Park Rangers, and they're under some pressure to retain his services. A lot of senior clubs are interested in him. Crossing is a dangerous one with Hakeney's power in the air. Here is Hakeney now! It really should have been. with the corner kick. Here's Hately. And the header tipped over the bar to Danny Maddox. Great save by Hitchcock. Petrescu. Now then for Peacock. 
Hit it by Petrescu again. Good touch then by Spencer. Peacock! And it's in! The deflection, I think, may have deceived Jurgen Sommer. It squeezed over his head and into the corner. Petrescu. Good running by Hullet. Hullet with the finish. Spencer, cheekily chip through, it's Furlong, and it's two! Chelsea have struck again, just before half-time. What a shattering blow for Queen's Park Rangers to suffer. Will it taking charge of this set-piece? With Petrescu alongside him. Here's Will it now, chipped over invitingly, and the head only just wide from Dewberry. Dewberry climbing high, a shot to the back one and into the corner! Tremendous goal by Nigel Quasi! A phenomenal strike! Well, Hitchcock has absolutely no answer to that. And the 17-year-old has brought Queen's Park Rangers back into this cup tie. Now Sinclair, the cross into Allen. Eight there with Hitchcock. And the referee's given the penalty. Hatley was certainly bundled over that by Hitchcock, who went right into the back of him. And Hatley used all his old know-how and experience then to convince the referee, and I'm not saying it was an foul, but he certainly made sure the referee noticed. Here is Allard. Oh, he's missed it! That's some distance, too. What an escape for Chelsea. Well, Chelsea will want to calm it all down a little now. Oh, let's head up. And maybe he's it on the goal. Fall off! Terrific save for Jürgen Sommer. Now, Petrescu with the cross. Young Hullet, but Newton is there. He'll play through to Spencer. Spencer shot! And again, Jürgen Sommer to the rescue of the Queen's Park Rangers. Even Jürgen Sommer has come up now. Well, he's got nothing to lose. Quasi with a corner kick. There is Sommer. Shades of Peter Schmeichel. Back in by Yates. Sommer still up there. And it was Hullet who cleared. Quasi! Cantona's touch. Not sure, though. Quinn. Gooding's outside him. Morley in the middle. Nogan trying to get there. shot really from him but he caught the end of Trevor Morley who got something on it floated in here by Gooding it's a difficult ball really for Neville Jimmy Quinn has the shot and as Schmeichel spread himself it rolled off Morley wide of the post this is Cole United get the free kick, they take it quickly with Keane, now it's Neville, Philip, Lee Sharp's flip doesn't work, Jones didn't buy the dummy, this is Nogan, and Quinn, Jones, there's movement both sides here for Reading, Gooding is the player far left, Jilks is coming up just behind him, Gooding's cross, in the six-yard box, Reading would have been in front. Gooding is doing so well. No wonder Nogan applauds. That's the kind of ball a striker should thrive on. Gooding has driven it in low across the six-yard box, and there was nothing Bruce could have done if Nogan had got to it. Over and 
It's really given Williams, the number five, a chance to go up now for the first time onto the far side of the area to join Quinn and Morley. Jones will take it. Parkinson's also good in the air. That was Williams. This is Gooding. Jokes. Bernal. Jones. Bernal. Holsgrove is just to his left. Quinn's now to his left. Holsgrove shoots. There was some swerve on that. Paul Holsgrove whose father, John, was a professional. Strikes this, but it's swerving away. but good challenging by Butt and it could be that United get the better of that after all it's Cole who's put a lovely ball out to the right hand side Cantona with Irwin steaming outside him Cantona in and out by Jilts Cantona again but good block and Morley sets Reading on their way with Gooding Jimmy Quinn to the left Gooding going at the moment on his own Here's Quinn, they're making strides in the centre now, this is Holsgrove, now Jilts going through, Morley! Well, while all that was happening, the good move, there was a furious row between Keane and Cantona about how Manchester United came to be in that situation, but don't worry about that, it's Morley's shot across the goalkeeper and across the goal. Didn't quite get the power into that, the direction that he would ideally have wanted Trevor Morley <laughs> oh it's neat Cole sharp it's very neat and Neville in here good block Nicky Hammond sharp appealed there, nobody got anything. And uh, Brown now sensing that Nogan can push Reading forward. Morley. Jones. Well, when those old-time football writers of the 50s used to talk about a ding-dong battle, <laughs> This is what they meant. The last incident involved Roy Keane. And uh, Philip Neville did ever so well here. And when the ball came back in from Sharp, it's Keane who's really foiled first by one ready. They thought he should have had a penalty. The challenge was by Bernal, but it wasn't given. Keane. on but but he took it so quickly that uh, Reading have got back now Neville Cole 
Giggs. Sharp to his left. Good interception by Jilts, but Giggs got a foot in. Sharp! Real chance, Lee Sharp! Howard Giggs, surely! Goal! It's Ryan Giggs for Manchester United. Helped to pick it and certainly scored it. Lee Sharp involved as well. 37 minutes into the match, the Premiership side are in the lead. Giggs took on two of them there. Lee Sharp tricked Williams, tr just tucked it back inside off Nicky Hammond, and Giggs thumped it past the two men in the six-yard box. Look at the number of players United have got in there. There's five of them in the penalty area. The old-fashioned forward line. One of them might have been in an offside position, actually, Cantona whoever it was on the line but he wasn't interfering at that moment and the goal stands Giggs the scorer helped on by Parkinson but Bruce has set Keane away he's got Giggs to his right Cole through the centre to his left Here's Cole. That's Andy Cole. Oh, shaved the post. That's the end where the United fans are gathered on the terrace. And they must have thought they were going to see number two. This is Keane who tucks the ball in. Cole shot. Oof. reason for the substitution was that uh, Phil Neville wasn't feeling very well and in fact is being uh, examined by a doctor hence the appearance of Parker here he is now in fact the substitute he's got uh, plenty of support in the penalty area here oh he's got the near post and he scored what an extraordinary contribution from Paul Parker he fooled Nicky Hammond completely and most of his teammates I suspect he can't believe it look His first goal for Manchester United against Tottenham and here comes one in the FA Cup from way out on the right he strikes that right inside Nicky Hammond's near post and Manchester United are 2-0 up poor old Hammond he wouldn't have been led to expect that I don't ever remember a substitute coming on, getting booked in his first minute of play and scoring in what is fourth or fifth. Well, in fact, not even that. <laughs> a couple of minutes, more or less. So there's a little twist in this cup tie, and it seems to have put Manchester United, certainly for the moment, beyond Reading's reach. Here's Cole. And this is Sharp. Oh, Cantona would have just put that away. No defenders in there. Here's Gooding. Well, if uh, <laughs> Phil Neville in the dressing room was feeling a bit groggy, he might uh, suddenly feel better when he's told that uh, the man who replaced him has just scored a spectacular goal. Paul Parker. come off Williams Bruce Keane this is uh, Phil Neville um, Irwin Keane oh there's Roy Keane well that would have surely sealed it the Premiership side have taken over here at Elm Park and Keane had he managed to find the corner there would have left Reading chasing a miracle here's Morley about how Manchester United have been able to move the ball on this surface it's been uh, pretty accurate and with 20 minutes to go in the match they're leading by two goals to nil Cantona finds another way of beating a man 
<laughs> got his foot caught in the sand. Here's Parker. Outside him is Giggs, who swap wings now. Back to the right. <laughs> Goes all the way, but Williams stuck with him. Two Welshmen together, and Giggs has gone down. Back on his feet now is Reading attack. Parkinson. Nogan. It's about now that the groundsman predicted the pitch would start to freeze badly, but this is Cantona, and it's important Reading don't freeze here because they're two down, and this is Cole, and they've got players up to spare, United. Cole! You still get the feeling it's not quite going for Andy Cole. I'm not so sure that somebody in the middle hasn't said, why didn't you cross it? He's taking on Bernal here on the outside. And, oh, it only missed by the width of the post. Challenged by Butt. Gooding shakes him off. What a fit man he is for 36, Mick Gooding. Here's Andy Cole to Roy Keane. Cantona is also up in this attack. Number seven. Keane. I think it would be fair to say that Manchester United have been a little careless once or twice when they've had the chance to really turn the screw on Reading in the second half. This is Bruce. He's going to show them the way, is he? This is Giggs. Well, Steve Bruce having quite a sortie out here on the right, but it goes the other way to Cantona. Giggs in the centre. Still Cantona, Cole, Bruce! Oh, he's missed it! Oh, dear me. Well, he'll have a laugh about that eventually the moment because Cantona put that on a plate Steve Bruce had made such a lot of ground to get into that position Cantona goes away from Williams low across the goal how could he miss well he did this is Gooding thumped up by Schmeichel it goes beyond Mika to Keane Irwin, but this forward very well from those positions, Nicky, but just look at that. It's a really great run by Butt, and he's pulled it back surely here, and Cantona settles the match in the last minute. 3-0, but what a run by Nicky Butt. The young midfield player showing perhaps why Alex Ferguson put so much trust in him this season when Paul Ince left. He surges through here from a deep position, taking defenders in his path, gets clear, looks up, sees what's on and delivers a pullback which is initially meant for Lee Sharp through the legs of Williams and there's Eric Cantona, goalkeeper already grounded, 3-0 to Manchester United. right again with that left foot danger Johnson well it was an easy enough looking save at the end of it here comes more pressure led by Townsend Johnson stayed on side and now he's got the chance to shoot and that was a top class save from Alan Kelly and a top class shot from Tommy Johnson can throw it in if Dave Bassett was here you'd say he'd be throwing it into the mixer what can they get out of the mixer Tuttle got a good head it's a fantastic save by Mark Bosnick from Atchison. And I don't think Bosnick felt that Aston Villa's defenders were quite as concentrated as they should have been. Route 1 football from Sheffield United. And only a really athletic save from Bosnick kept Aston Villa level. Short. Ward into Wirt. Couldn't really get his leg around it enough. Long run from Bosnich caused Kelly a lot of problems to get with him well, but there may be more trouble. Quick thinking from Milosevic. Townsend. 
Milosevic, Villa finding their passing game again. It's pass and move football here. Draper in. That's close, but not quite close enough from Andy Townsend. Ben Whitehouse might think of that one. Ward. Bosnich has come a long way. And he got it. Hodges won it back well. And they stay forward. And Ugo Ahiog is in the right place for Villa. And now Johnson can break out. It's two against one. Milosevic is in here. Savo Milosevic. Savo Milosevic. What does the referee say? Penalty. Milosevic under two challengers. And it's the keeper, Alan Kelly, who gets a yellow card. seen a penalty as coolly taken as that in a long, long time. 63 minutes gone, and Aston Villa are one up. An outrageous penalty in a pressure cut tie. That was fantastic. Milosevic is onto it again now. He won't mind the booze. Milosevic to Sheffield United's relief. He missed the target, but I don't think he did so by an awful lot. David White. That's a bit loose. Johnson's onto it. York's looking for it in the inside right channel. Milosevic is to his left. And this is Sabo Milosevic. with 13 goals this season and they really do complement each other sharing them with Armstrong sharing them with 20 goals and they got the five between them but knocked out Hereford at the last stage three from sharing two from Armstrong now this is Clive Wilson could be problems for Wolves here and it certainly is Clive Wilson in the 13th minute has delivered the first blow of the game Took his chance really well then, Wilson. Just waited for his moment. Armstrong's path was blocked then by Dean Richards. Here's ball. Good control. Just asking a little too much though of Goodman. Or maybe not. And goes Goodman! And it's a goal! An extraordinary goal from Don Goodman. There really seemed to be no danger. Austin got himself in a tangle though. As it's played through there by Ball, it's certainly seen that Austin had little to do other than just to touch it back, but he touched it too lightly. First goal for Ball. Put in to Sheringham. Edinburgh's gone outside him, and it's left the road here for Clyde Wilson. Oh, so nearly out of the path then of Ron Fox. by Atkins here he is again balls in the middle and it turned into a dangerous cross then for Ian Walker who couldn't afford to take any risks and tipped it over the bar Kasky misunderstanding with Dean Austin a few Tottenham hearts skipped the beat there Sheringham has got Fox up with him Fox confronted by Thompson no penalty Referee David, David Allison just a few yards away. Saw nothing wrong with that. There's Armstrong with the header. Very unlucky then. And for once he'd invaded the marking. Did really well to get his header in at all then, Armstrong. Wolves are unchanged from the side that beat Sunderland here at the weekend. Mark Venus again deputising for Dean Richards at the back. Richards outstanding in the first game at White Hart Lane is still recovering from a motoring accident. Venus will be one of three central defenders. Neil Emblin and Eric Young are the others up front. Wolves are looking to the twin threat of the club's all-time record goal scorer Steve Bull and Don Goodman.
Well, Jerry Francis has had to make two changes from the Spurs side that played at Anfield. Andy Sinton is cup tied, so there's a place in this starting lineup for Ronnie Rosenthal and also for Jason Dozell, who's come in for the injured Justin Edinburgh. He was injured during training this week. Gary Mabbott and Colin Calderwood prevented Stan Collymore and Robbie Fowler from scoring for Liverpool on Saturday, and they'll be hoping to keep a similar tight rein on Bull and Goodman. At the other end, Teddy Sheringham and Chris Armstrong are in splendid form. Armstrong then looking to repeat his FA Cup success here of last season. Dozell. Now rule Fox. And he more than anyone really teased Wolves in that first game. Eric Young there towering over Sheringham. This is Sol Catmull with Eric Young, who's a formidable defender. Albeit now into his mid-30s, Eric Young. Played for Wimbledon in the FA Cup final back in 1988. That shot win over Liverpool. Up by Rose at Tal, and the flick was just over the bar from Armstrong. Mick McCarthy, the new manager of the Republic of Ireland team, has been making overtures in Armstrong's direction, hoping that he can find some Irish blood in him, but he's been unsuccessful so far. Armstrong will just fancy a sneaking feeling that he might make it into England squad in time for Euro 96. You certainly wouldn't rule it out. The turn then by Armstrong. The Thompson's anticipation sends Wolves on their way. Good run this by Thompson. Goodman. And it spins away off Calderwood for a corner to Wolves. And the home fans turning up the volume of support now. Off of a spirited run by Thompson. Off goes Goodman, who's pretty quick. But so too there was Colin Calderwood with the saving tackle. Crossed it by Osborne. Emblem was on the near post. Fox now. Armstrong was sprinting ahead of him. Rosenthal through the middle. Here is Rosenthal! <laughs> Terrific break then by Tottenham and Ronnie Rosenthal has sprung on the lead with eight minutes gone. Fox who inspired that counter-attack. And how quickly then they broke out from defence to attack. You can see Armstrong making that decoy run. Then Rosenthal sprinting through the middle. Nobody really has picked him up. And he's guided it in. Rosenthal, who scored in the last round against Hereford, when Tottenham were a little lucky to survive the first meeting in wintry conditions, it has to be said, two down at Hereford. And he's come up trumps for Tottenham here to give them the early lead. But then, of course, they had that in the first game. Joey Francis feels that the onus is always going to be on Wolves to attack more tonight. And that will certainly be the case now. And it might just leave them a little open at the back. Emblem with the shot. It's taken though. Great start, though, for Tottenham. And for Ronnie Rosenthal. Rule Fox, who have to lay it on for him. Well, he was probably Tottenham's best player in the first game, Rule Fox. And he started tonight in similar vein. Rosenthal scored four times and as many FA Cup ties the Spurs last season, including a remarkable hat-trick at Southampton in round five, I recall. So he clearly has a taste for the world's most famous club cup competition. Well, he can't really relax down there, Joey Francis, but he couldn't ask for more of his team in this early phase. They lead Wolves by a goal to nil at Molyneux. And the atmosphere absolutely sizzling here. Despite the freezing cold conditions, all oh, Sheringham's got in! Another dreadful defensive lapse by Andy Thompson. 
Ten minutes gone, two goals in the space of what? Less than three minutes. And Tottenham have totally taken charge of this FA Cup tie. It was Thompson's mistake who presented Clive Wilson with his goal in the first game. He's looked around, checked what's on, and he hasn't seen Sheringham. All credit there to the England striker for his awareness. And he sneaked in and steered it right into the corner. Fox. Osborne for Wolves. This is Ferguson trying to plough his way past Colin Calderwood. Ferguson, who's been out of favour for a long time at Molyneux. Osborne. And he's chipped it up for ball! And I thought then he was going to have a strike at goal at Simon Osborne, but he spotted Steve Ball. So he had two options open to him there. And he's chipped it to that far post. And Ball aiming for the far corner. Ferguson with the free kick. Way by Rosenthal. Armstrong. Now Fox. Taking on Atkins, still Fox, all slipping through, Rosenthal! Good stop by Mike Stone. Needed to be too. Venus with the attempted clearance, got a second bite at it, but he gave it straight to Fox! And Tottenham twice there came very close to a third goal. The excellence of Mike Stoll. Denying Ronnie Rosenthal, and then Fox for the second opportunity. After Wolves again got themselves in a tangle at the back. He's hardly a threat in the air, is he, Rule Fox? But it falls kindly for him there, and he'll be disappointed. He didn't at least stretch Mike Stoll again. Ferguson to Tony Daly. Bull setting off into the middle. Ferguson now. It's not a bad ball in. Goodman was there. Steve Bull. Back in towards Goodman, who was at full stretch and just couldn't make contact. Walker hurt doing that little melee. Armstrong. Joe Francis pointing there to the injury for Ian Walker, and Austin plays it out. Let's see what happened again. He elects to come out for the cross, he's caught by Don Goodman. Down he goes, and he hasn't really got back up in time. He was still floundering then, if Goodman had managed to get a header on target. Spurs do have a substitute goalkeeper on the bench in Chris Day. Eric Torsford, the Norwegian international, is still out through injury. Well, he cleared that somewhat gingerly. Here's Ronnie Rosenthal with Dozell. Now Austin. Still Wolves chasing the game, but without any real venom. Armstrong. Getting no sympathy from the referee. Now Sol Campbell, Sheringham had pulled out for him, and it'll fall here for Armstrong! And he has squandered a golden opportunity. And no wonder he can't believe it himself. Wolves were in total disarray then. Sheringham playing it back in, and it really shouldn't have fallen for Armstrong. But having said that, surely he should have scored. Well, they've got three in the box then, Tottenham, including the man here, Chris Armstrong. Calderwood making a nuisance of himself, hoping to anyway, around that six-yard box. Fox with the corner, over the head of Emblem, there's Sheringham! 
Not a fine stop by Stoll. He pulled his hand away in some agony there. It was really struck fiercely by Sheringham. But Mike Stoll once again was in the right place. Young can't get to Sheringham. He's hit it on the up. Atkins. Good one. Here's Eric Young. This is Bull. There's a shooting chance. And a tremendous stop by Ian Walker. My word, his agility was so admirable then. So often down the years, he's fashioned that kind of opening, Steve Bull. His pace and his determination setting up the chance. And what a save by Ian Walker. Ferguson with the corner, Goodman with the header, and then Bull over the top. Well, they're having chances now, but it's, you would think, too late. That's twice Steve Bull has gone close. Goodman wins it in the air. Bull wasn't really tightly picked up. But to Tottenham's relief, it's over the bar. Steve Bull, so often a hero in the past, but not this time. And cleanly so. Rule Fox back into that danger area where Sheringham is lucky. Sheringham again. Stoll is there. Well, that would have sealed it then for Teddy Sheringham. Lena's trying to hook it away but doesn't really do so with any effectiveness. It was the player back on the line, Ferguson, who made the first save and then. Still the second one from sharing them again.